here I am in my test plan, well, the template activity five, and these are the only tests I've done. Please make sure that you fill in as many tests as you think is necessary. So I've probably gone overboard in my original activity too. I believe if I quickly scroll up, I had a total of 16, 15 tests, a bit much. You don't need to have that much in my opinion. Test the main features of the system. I've gone above and beyond again. I've done stuff like randomly testing the LEDs, randomly testing the buzzer, randomly testing the LCD as well. No issue with this. If you have enough time, you should, you might as well do these things just to show that you've been fully comprehensive in what you're testing and obviously explain why you're testing it as well. So I'm going to only explain maybe the top two here. It's going to be the same thing repeated again, but for different components. Then I'm going to go down to these two sections here, which are the, let's say the meat of everything. So I said, I uh, test that the LEDs can be triggered properly. Write a program to flash the green and red LED. I only put green here, but and red is as well as fine. I can say the green LED should turn on for one second and turn off. The LEDs, both green and red, were connected to the pin. Um, sorry, they were connected to the correct pin and the resistor. They came on as they should. Now, the comments on justification, justifying. When you justify something, you say why it was done. The comments, you don't really need to worry about that. Just the justification itself will explain um, in, a, in enough detail, in my opinion. <clears throat> this was done to test whether or not I would be able to correctly control LED actions. LEDs are to act as a visual representation of the system. Now, just below that, luckily, I have a buzzer. So that's my test number two. Test the buzzer can be activated from the microcontroller. Write a program to, acti uh, to activate the buzzer for a single second. Um, and that's it. The buzzer should be audible and stay on for one second. The buzzer came on when expected. That's my actual result. So it worked as it should. Like the LEDs, the buzzer is to represent the current action of the system, but in this case, in an audible manner. So remember, the LEDs, the LCD, they're supposed to be a visual representation, whereas the buzzer is supposed to be an audible representation of what the system is doing, whether it's reading the... Um, the magnet thing properly or not, that's what it's supposed to do. Now, uh, you know what, I might as well do everything. It's only five of them. Check if the LCD can be activated by the microcontroller. Write some program to turn the LCD on and to put some text there, right? That's it. The LCD should turn on either with a backlight being bright and foreground being dark or opposite. You can control these actions of the LCD. The LCD was able to be written to. It was able to display the welcome message as well as the number of good and bad products detected by the system. Why test the LCD? The LCD is to be used as a non-ambiguous way for the operator of the system to know what is happening at any given time. It would, it would display prompts and the good and bad counts. This would um, allow quick action to be taken to solve any issues that might arise. Now, the LEDs, even though they are good, because I have a green LED and a red LED, green typically means good, everything is okay, everything is all right. Red typically means things are not good, they're not okay, they're not all right. However, if every time I count a good item, the green LED goes on, and every time I count a bad item, the red LED goes on. That doesn't actually give me much information in, in the long run. Whilst I'm looking at the system, whilst I glance over it, I can see the green LED flash, I can see the red LED flash. But with the LCD, I was able to actually write to the LCD, good count equals 100, for example. Bad count equals 45, for example. It was always updated with the most recent information and it would just be very easy to read. I wouldn't have, there, would, there would be no guesswork present because most people can read and most people would be able to simply read how many good items there are and how many bad items there are. Next, get value from the magnet sensor. In this case, it's the hall sensor. Will be tested at rest to get base value. It will then be moved closer and closer to a magnet of similar size to the mount body mag, the mount body's magnet. It's supposed to be apostrophe. Mount body's magnet. The value of the magnet sensor should increase or should change printing out the new value onto the shell, not console, uh, shell or LCD, whichever one is fine. So it worked as it should. And I said a value of zero was given when there was no magnet and a value of one was given when a magnet was moved within range. This was the most integral part of the system. This would detect if a magnet was present in the mount body or not and in turn would trigger, um, let me just put that in, and in turn would 
trigger other uh, actions to take place something like that right that's it and the last one i have on my list to check whether or not correct values were being displayed for the count so I had two count values again. I had good count and I had bad count. Good count was supposed to be when a magnet was detected. Bad count was supposed to be when a magnet was not detected. Check both the values for good count and bad count. They should both only uh, increase, not increased. They should both only increase based on the condition. If the magnet is present, good count should increase. If no magnet is present, bad count should increase. Now again, please keep in mind, both these should not increase at the same time only one at a time. The values displayed were correct. The value was shown on both the LCD and the shell. Again, we say we justify. Only the value for the bad items was originally asked for by the client. It was easy enough to add the good items as well. This was done in order to give the ability to quickly compare the values and if a change was needed, it could be made. So imagine you're in a factory, the thing is doing what it's supposed to do, is counting as it's supposed to count, but for some reason, it has 1,000 bad items and it has five good items. You'd be like, whoa, 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 there's something wrong here. You probably, at, at that stage, you probably want to stop the machine because if you have 1,000 bad items and, one, and, and only five good items, there's probably something going on there, right? So this is it. This is how I would do it. I'm, I'm not going to do everything, obviously. You guys know the tests you have. Simply fill it in and justify why you tested that thing. Say why you tested it. I needed to know if my LEDs would work because I don't want to just um, have the system um, maybe just having a good count or a bad count or a good magnet or no magnet and then just doing nothing. There sh a system should always have some visual or audible representation. Hence, this also links into the system having good or being a user-friendly system. Now the user knows what's going on. There's no guesswork involved. Let's scroll down. Now the last thing I spoke to you guys about was the evaluation. It, I literally just copied these from the PowerPoint. So you don't even need to, I won't even read through these. These are copied directly from the PowerPoint I showed in the previous video. So this is what I would do. I would have a label called evaluation maybe or um, system, let's change maybe system criteria met, what, whatever you want to call it is fine. And you simply go through and ask, you, ask yourself these questions as the person Pretend you were the client and you come to see your new product and you ask a few questions and you explain to the client, oh yes, this is working, that's working, that's not working, this is working. Remember, this is a prototype. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect the first time. So this is what I would do for my activity five. Activity five is finished. The last section that we have to do now is activity six. We're supposed to spend roughly 2.5 hours on this. It doesn't need to take that long in my opinion. But let's go ahead and make a start on activity six next.